I got nightmares in my head, I fear Thoughts build up until I can't hear My mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I got nightmares in my head, I fear The thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Hello and a warm welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. In this analysis, I want to focus our attention on just one of the posters in the Ramsey basement, this one. Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. I also want to recommend that you watch a, a very neat, coherent bit of analysis on the movie posters, but on all six of them. On, the, on Cotton Star's channel. I'll put a link to that in the description. If you're enjoying this analysis, please like, share, leave a comment. You can also hit the thanks button and let's get started. Now, it's easy to look at the opening moments in Cotton Star's video and also in the video that I made about three years ago and assume that this footage and these images of the movie posters are just hanging around online, hanging around like low-hanging fruit on a tree you know, easy to find, ready to be plucked. But the reality is it's very difficult to find. Even if you know it's out there, it's hard to find. I can't remember if I originally saw this on John Bonnet's America or the case of John Bonnet or somewhere else. Most of the footage you see in the basement is of the open basement window with the suitcase under it, a perspective that literally has the photographer standing in front of the Star Trek poster with his back to it. And unfortunately, in the footage, even the footage that does exist, where the video does briefly glance upwards from the table, you know, it's such a quick moment that if you blink, you're going to miss it. Also, the Star Trek poster is, interestingly, almost on the opposite side of the wall to the wine cellar, the room where John Bonnet was found. And if you think about it, it almost comes full circle. The, the poster takes you to the source potentially of one of the words in the ransom note, faction, which is in the first three lines of the ransom note. And then the uh, on the back side of that poster is the wall. And on the other side of the wall, John Bonnet was found. There's an interesting sort of symbolic configuration, if you will. Now, curiously, despite the efforts of the case of John Bonnet to replicate the inside of the Ramsey home, by referencing crime scene photos, even they didn't seem to go to the trouble to confirm what movie posters were on the wall. It's possible that they felt that there's just not enough footage to confirm that. There's not enough material to show that when in fact there is. They perhaps didn't see the movie posters as an important detail, something that I'm sure Cotton Star would disagree with. I certainly do. And of course, this lazy attention to detail is precisely how false notes ruin a symphony. Somebody else coming after the fact might assume from this documentary that, that, is the, that those are the movie posters and might also assume wrongly nothing to see here. Now, speaking of false notes, it's also easy to assume that the Star Trek movie on the wall is also the Star Trek movie quote referenced in the ransom note. Well, it's not. On the wall appears to be a movie with three faces and a sort of red, yellow, green rainbow with a brightest line in the middle. Well, it's this poster. Star Trek The Motion Picture came out in 1979, but the movie we want to pay attention to is this one. Star Trek First Contact was released on November 22, 1996, barely a month before John Bonnet was killed. It was the highest grossing film on its opening weekend. The plot of this film, in very broad terms, is of a captain who sacrifices himself in order to save a member of his crew, Data. I suppose one could say that he's prepared to sacrifice himself. The ransom note arguably tries to do the same thing. The word faction appears in the third line of the ransom note, Immediately after referring to faction is a reference to John's business. Care has gone into not just referring to his business, but in my opinion, deliberately misspelling it. 
The business in question is spoken about far too rarely these days, Lockheed Martin. Axis Graphics was a division of Lockheed and John was actually an employee of Lockheed Martin. The words a group of individuals that represent in the ransom note come awfully close to the word member used by Captain Picard in First Contact to explain his relationship to the faction in the script. Faction. Think about it. When last did you use that word? It's an unusual word, a word you yourself probably haven't needed to use for the past 12 months at least. It appears twice in the first contact script, both times in the context of the captain helping someone escape their pursuers. This is the audio of the opposite text from the script where the word faction is referenced. Carefully. Who are you with? What faction? There's a... There's a new faction that wants to prevent your launch tomorrow morning. Now, if you broaden the context of the script, every time the word faction comes up, the character Lily Sloan asks the captain to get her out of here. One can imagine this sentiment of feeling trapped and needing to find a way out was precisely how the Ramses felt when confronted with a dead child in their home. Cotton Star also referen- references the Borg which John himself refers to in his own book, Death of Innocence. In my copy, it's uh, d- described on page 321, around about more than half a page worth. Jamison, a Ramsey apologist, has referred to this image of snow beside the window grate, supposedly taken on December 26th, as Borg misinformation. So here you have a Ramsey apologist actually using... Um, that type of description from Star Trek as a way to criticize critics. Regardless of the date, it is an actual police photo, and one would think the police took a photo of the window grate plus snow for a reason. Additionally, if an intruder did climb through the grate and find themselves in the basement, guess what the first thing would be that they would see on their way into the next room? Well, it would be the Star Trek poster floating directly above the train room. I don't think there is any doubt that the Ramses knew and liked the Star Trek mythos, and I think it's vastly underreported that the source for the faction reference was likely the film that came out four weeks earlier. You often hear that the Ramsey note seems to be written by someone who who liked movies, who watched a lot of movies, but you don't really hear much about the Star Trek aspect. And the important thing to note is that the Star Trek First Contact was the hit movie in theaters over the Christmas of 1996. Meanwhile, the Ramses have got a movie poster from the very same franchise framed in their basement. And guess what that area basically is? It's an area where their son tends to play. It also raises the question, where was the ransom note written? And whoever wrote the ransom note, did they write it with that poster near at hand, perhaps over their shoulder? I personally think it's more likely the ransom note was written in the basement than anywhere else. Also, were the Ramses ever asked if they watched Star Trek First Contact or when they did, if they did? If John Ramsey's credit card statements had been released, this might have been established from them. It's easy enough to let the narrative settle there, and perhaps most would. But another question that arises is, where does John's interest in space and spaceships come from? Well, didn't it come from his work for Lockheed Martin, an aerospace company? Didn't it come from there and his training as a pilot? Perhaps we need to dedicate a chapter in our analysis to that undiscovered country, John Ramsey and Lockheed Martin. Anyway, I'm not going to take it further than that. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.